Hello Internet, I just wanted to uh, take a few minutes. Uh, I kind of felt the need to make a video and go over some things that I have learned about uh, dogs and Great Danes in particular uh, since we've got a hold of old Lurch here. Uh, there's been a lot of things changed since the uh, first video where we went and got him. I know I made a couple of update videos, but I don't believe I've made one about him in a long time. Uh, but one of the biggest changes is that he's now an inside dog. Uh, he, we went to Petco and we got the biggest dog bed that Petco had and uh, put it at the foot of our bed over kind of in the corner. And uh, he sleeps in the house now. He's a year and nine months now, a little over. Uh, so I just wanted to take a moment to talk about a few things that I've learned about uh, Great Danes and dogs uh, thanks to Old Lurch here. So the first thing is that uh, everybody wants to meet your dog everybody it's a head turner i don't know if it's because maybe there's not a lot of great danes in eastern kentucky uh, but even though we live sort of out in our own little world here i do try to take him out in public and socialize him from time to time if i go to tractor supply or petco uh, i tend to take him with me uh, he does fine in the vehicles but everybody is curious about your dog i had him in the bed of the pickup truck the other day and i stopped at a red light on the way to petco and uh he stood up for a second when the truck stopped to look around, and when he stood up, I saw people in the car behind me had children, and they were all, you know, freaking out. And I saw a flash where one of them took a picture of him through the windshield of their car. Uh, when you go into the store, everybody's wanting to know how much does he weigh? Can I pet him? Is he friendly? Uh, uh, you know, kids' heads are turning and their mouths are dropping open if you drive through the parking lot and they see him. Uh, so when you have a Great Dane, everybody wants to meet him. Now, because everybody wants to meet him, uh, you do need to control how many people you allow around your dog at one time. Because not all dogs, uh, even Great Danes, not all of them are going to be just crazy about humans and people. Lurch is one of those that's not crazy about literally everybody. If there's one person that approaches him head on and asks to pet him, 99% of the time he's perfectly fine with it. But sometimes if he gets overwhelmed, if there's two or three people all coming at him at once, or if you are coming up behind me and maybe he thinks you're trying to sneak up on me and be shady, he has growled at a couple of people. And so that's just something you've got to be cognizant of because a Great Dane is a dog that's big enough that if he were, he's never snapped at anybody, but if he were to, he could really hurt him because he's big enough to do a lot of damage. And so. Uh, you need to be aware of that and be aware of the fact that they're not all going to be lovey-dovey people dogs, you know, like you see on, on YouTube or in the movies and things. Some of them are fine with one or two people and, and then want to be left alone. And some other ones may not want anybody except their owner around them. So uh, it's like any other dog, you've just got to, kind of, you've got to kind of work with them and feel out what's their boundaries and respect that. They can be very affectionate. I have, had, I have been working on cars and had Lurch walk up and just lay his head on my shoulder and just want to hug. Or if I'm in bed, he'll walk up on my side of the bed sometimes and just lay his head up on my belly while I'm sleeping. They are very affectionate dogs. If you want a dog that can give you hugs and love you the same as a person would, uh, then, a, then a Great Dane might be a good choice for you because they can be very affectionate. They like to lean. Uh, I was told by some random person that it was because they were trained to always want to be close to their soldiers. They were trained to be war dogs. I don't know if it's because of that or it's just because it's a shorter distance to lean on you than it is to sit down. But uh, if they like you, uh, they will walk up and just lean into you with their body weight. When they weigh 150 plus pounds, you know, you need to be ready to brace that, that kind of weight leaning against you but uh, that's not something to be discouraged or scolded out of them. That's a sign of affection uh, and loyalty. They can be very vocal. Uh, Lurch in the mornings especially will give you lip if you're not letting him out the door fast enough to go poop or whatever. Just, rah, 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 rah. Uh, and so they're not quite like a husky. And you can see here he's pretty, pretty chillaxed other than the fact that he's hot. But they can be very vocal dogs. Them dogs going wild up there. Uh, their tails can be very muscular and can do a lot of damage in the house. Uh, so you need to give them avenues through the house where they can pass without knocking dishes and pictures and, or hitting your television screens and things of that nature. Uh, because their tails, especially right here at the base, are very strong. And so if they hit you or they hit other objects in the house, they can do some damage. 
that said, they do do better than you would think in the house. We're a family of four in a, a double wide mobile home and uh, he does amazingly well. We've got avenues where he can walk and go and if he gets into a corner or something where he feels sort of like he can't get out, uh, he'll stop and he looks around and he makes a concerted effort to back up like a school bus or a big truck uh, to get out of the corner that he's in. And uh, you know, he, he does pretty well for the, most of the time. If he feels like he's stepping on something he shouldn't be stepping on, you'll watch him. He can, he'll, he'll stop and kind of look for some place to put his feet. And so they do do pretty well in the house, even in our case, you know, a small-ish, you know, family of four-sized house. Uh, their diet is another thing you need to keep uh, keep tabs on. Uh, because they are so big, they are prone to joint problems later in life especially. Uh, and there are large breed foods available that come with glucosamine and chondroitin and other joint supplements in the food. Uh, and so that may be something that you want to pay attention to, maybe get them uh, food that is engineered toward large breed dogs or add supplements uh, to their dog food. For a while we were adding glucosamine supplements to his dog food and then we found a large breed that comes with glucosamine and other things in it. It's the uh, Wholehearted uh, Petco in-house brand. We pay about $50 a bag for that give or take and then every eighth bag of food Petco has a thing where we get the eighth bag for free. And so just because they are such big dogs and they have special dietary requirements, that may be something that you want to pay attention to, especially starting out early in life. Because my, my logic is that if I take care of him now, he may be less likely to have serious issues later in life. If you have children, especially small children, you do need to work with. Now Lurch has been excellent around my kids, but because of his size, uh, there have been one or two incidents. Shortly after we got him, he knocked both of my kids for a loop. Just playing, running around, but he knocked one off the porch because he turned around too fast. We had to put railings on it. And uh, another one called him and had a toy and he came running and couldn't stop and plowed into her and knocked her for a loop. So if you have children, especially small children, that is something that you're going to want to pay attention to and, and work with them uh, on how to deal with your children. And, te and teach your children on how to work around the dog because it's, you know, it's a give and take situation. You also need to work with them and other pets, especially pets that don't live with them. Now, I have read uh, and seen videos from other people that say their Great Danes do amazingly well with their animals. Now, Lurch does great with, we have another small husky puppy named Copper. He does great with him, and I think it's because we brought Copper in as a puppy. He doesn't see Copper as a threat. He loves him to death. He, he lays down on the floor to allow Copper to get on top of him and play with him. He likes the cat, the cat hates him, but he li he, he'll lay down and he wants the cat to play with him. The cat hates his guts, doesn't want nothing to do with him. So, uh, But he does fine with the cat, he doesn't chase him or anything like that. Now my mom's dog, Shadow, which is also a husky that lives down on the other end of the same property, about a quarter mile from here, but doesn't live here. Uh, when we put them in a lot together, what do you do? When we put them in a lot together, they play well enough, but he can be overly aggressive with Shadow, especially if I'm around and he thinks Shadow is bothering me or doing something that I don't want him to do, because Shadow's a husky, he's, he's wild and playful and things, he can be overly aggressive with him. He, he'll grab him by the neck and hold him still until I leave the area where he doesn't think Shadow's bothering me anymore. And then he lets him go, and then they're fine. They're best friends. Now, I have, uh, I have worked with him on that, and he does better, but he's still, that's just a tendency that he has, and I'm not sure that that's something that, that can be trained out of him. Uh, from what I've read, it's just certain lines and certain uh, certain animals. Are just that's the propensity that they have. So that's something with Lurch uh, that I've got to work around. With animals that are not part of his pack, he's a little aggressive. And so I, I I try to watch him when I have him out in public and he's around other animals. And that leads me into my next point, which is that in some lines they can be a little bit aggressive. Now, like I said. Most of the time with other people, especially if I'm talking to you and I introduce you and tell you that it's okay to pet him, he's fine. But there have been a couple of incidents, like I said earlier, if somebody walks up behind me in the store or if there's multiple people coming at him at once and he feels overwhelmed, there's been a couple times he's growled at people. He hasn't snapped at anybody or anything of that nature and as soon as I hear it, I just tell people, back off, he's getting overwhelmed, I'll grab him and physically turn him away from you know wherever the, he thinks the threat's coming from. Uh, but that's something that you need to be cognizant of is that some of them, some lines, uh, I guess they just have a propensity for aggression. 
and apparently it's a known issue because I was reading that there are some homeowners insurance companies that won't even insure your home if they know that you have a great day. Another thing is that you want to train them and set patterns for behavior as early as possible because they are big enough that if you let something go, like running in the house in front of you or dragging you by the leash or things of that nature, though whatever you know, bad behavior, it becomes exponentially worse as they grow and they grow and they grow and they get to be to weigh almost as much as you do. You know, when you're walking in the park, you might see somebody with their little chihuahua on a leash and it's just a yanking and a pulling and a barking, but it's not a big deal to them because the thing weighs five to 10 pounds and they can just hold on to it. Well, imagine if that was 150 pounds on the end of that leash. And so it's important that you work with them young and you correct the bad behavior before you ever get them out into public because it's a lot more difficult to manage the bigger they get. And Great Danes are very affectionate animals. One thing I learned is that they don't respond well to negative, uh, to negative training methods, to punishment, things of that nature. And I mean, I'm not saying don't scold them because that is an effective method. It doesn't involve hitting the animal or things of that nature. But in the past with other dogs that I've had, I've found that just take the end of the leash and, and whap them on the, on the butt a little bit. It doesn't hurt them, it scares them to death and it kind of drives home the point. But even that, with him, he takes that as like a personal assault on him, and he'll get plumb depressed. And so because they're so emotional and, and attached to their people and affectionate, I learned, I, <laughs> I learned that it's very important that as much as possible, uh, you use positive training methods. Now, that's not to say that you can't physically restrain them if they're trying to yank on a leash, because that's what you have to do. What I'm saying is don't whip the animal or things of that nature because that doesn't work, especially with Great Danes. Another thing to keep in mind is that any medications that you get from flea pills to, to anything else is going to cost about double what it would for any other dog. Uh, we recently switched him to uh, Sentinel to prevent heartworms and intestinal worms and things. Uh, and we've been giving him Brevecto for a while because he had demodectic mange when we got him. And for both of those pills, I have to buy two of everything because the largest dose that they have is not large enough for his body weight. So I have to get like one of the largest dose and then one of a slightly smaller dose. With the Prevecto, I just get two of the biggest and then I cut the second one into quarters and I give him like one and a quarter. So I, I get off a little cheaper because I only buy two every four months. But that's still, you're having to double up on medication simply because the dog is so big that most medications are not dosed for body weights that high. And so that's something to keep in mind. Like the Brevecto for him, that's going to be a lifetime treatment. Uh, normally Brevecto is an every three month thing, but our vet recommended once a month because of the demodectic mange. It keeps it pushed down and keeps it suppressed uh, so that he doesn't have an issue with that anymore even though the, that type of mange itself is not necessarily contagious to dogs he may be around, it's not something that I want to flare up and give him issues. But that's a commitment on my part to every month buying a $50 pill, every four months buying a second $50 pill with it, spending $100. I spent $100 this, uh, a few days ago was one month where I had to get two Brevecto, and I spent $130 just on a flea pill and, uh, and, a, heart, and, and a worm preventative. That's one month's worth of medication for this dog. So that's something that you need to keep in mind if you're considering getting a Great Dane is that literally anything you buy is going to be more expensive because you're going to need more and bigger of whatever it is. Another thing I learned was that there are certain commands that are especially helpful with dogs as big as Great Danes. One of the most useful commands I taught Lurch was back up. I sat on the porch one night and I had a bag of treats and he likes to get right in my face and I would put my hand on his chest, push him backwards and say back up. And then when he, after he got back what I deemed an appropriate distance where he wasn't right in my face, I'd give him a treat and reward him. I did that for about an hour, hour and a half straight. And I did that for a couple of nights. And so now I've got him to the point where when I say back up, he takes three or four steps backwards. That's a command all in its own. But they're so big that if you realize he's crowding one of your kids or he's getting right up trying to get in the food bowl while you're still filling it, you need him to give you some space. You just tell him back up, backs up three or four steps, gives you some space. That is one of the most useful commands I have ever taught a dog. He's the first one I've ever needed to teach it to.
And I just had this thought, what if I just taught him just to back up and get out of my face? And it worked. So if you have a Great Dane, try to teach him the command back up or, or, or some, some other word that you and your dog agree on that they understand means back up, give you some space. And the last thing I want to talk about is drool. Now, you probably heard this in a thousand videos, but the drool is real. Uh, especially when they, right after they drink. Lurch will drink. We've got a, a little auto watering bowl in there with like a jug on top. Uh, but then there's times that he wants water that's colder than that. And you alright, Bubby? And he'll go into the bathtub and motion for us to turn the bathtub on so he can drink that ice cold water straight out of the well. And if you don't catch him right after he's done drinking, it's slime just hanging off of his jowls and he'll shake and it hits the ceiling and the walls and the floors and it just goes everywhere. Uh, so drool is just something that you're going to have to get used to, even when they're not drinking. Last night I was up late, he come up to me at 1 o'clock in the morning and put a slobber covered ball in my lap, wanted me to come outside and play with him, so I brought him out here and played with him for 10 minutes. But you're just going to have to slobber and drool is just a fact of life. I know it's probably going to be better or worse with, with certain animals, uh, but with Great Danes in particular, there's just a lot of it. They've got them big loose flappy jowls and they drool a lot. So put systems into place, you know, to manage that and keep it you know, as under control as can be reasonably be expected. But if you're somebody who likes to keep their house absolutely immaculately clean all the time, maybe a Great Dane's not for you. Because you're going to have to keep little hand towels around to catch them, like right when they come in the door, right after they're done drinking, and towel them off a little bit. Because if you don't, it's going to end up on your ceiling. But I just wanted to take a few moments to... Oh, he's back here in the shade. I wanted to take a few moments to give y'all a little bit of an update uh, about Lurch. He's up now to about 150 pounds. Uh, he's doing great. He's loving life. He's living in the house now. But he's having a great time. I just wanted to give y'all an update on Lurch, let you know how he's doing. Right now, like I said, he's back here in the shade, keeping cool. And to tell you some things that I have learned about Great Danes and dogs in general, thanks to getting Lurch here. So if y'all have any questions, comments, concerns, or suggestions, if you have a Great Dane or if you know more about training dogs than I do, please leave some suggestions in the comment section because I'm just a guy who likes his dogs. I'm not a professional dog trainer or anything of that nature. Everything that I know and do is things that I have either been taught in real life or have read and watched about online. And I'm always looking for ways to better myself and to do better with my animals. But anyway, this is Marcus out. Y'all have a good. All right, come on, Bubby. Can you get out? Can you get, are you stuck? There you go. Come on. That's a good boy. Yet you is. Come on, let's get out of there. Oh, didn't mean to step on you. Come, you, you're tipping the whole swing over. There you go. Thank you. There you go. Nope, oh, nope, oh, did that bra. Good pull, pull, pull hard. Pull hard, there you go, good pull. Pull, 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 oh, oh, you win, you win. Hey, 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 drop it, drop it. Thank you, good boy, good boy. Hey, Lurch, hey, back up, thank you. And here's Comper, our three month sit. Hush. Good sit. Good sit. Or nasty because he ran away up on the hill a minute ago. Lippy husky puppy. I'm trying to put your leash on, numb nuts. There we go. Alright. It's a good old fella, Lurch. Hermione, if he... If he's wanting to poop, let him walk around and poop a little bit. Hermione, you don't, Hermione, just follow him. You don't have to holler at him constantly. Walk around with him. He's okay. He's not bothering anything. Just don't let go of him. Keep him out of shadow's reach. There you go. Good job. Lurch, he's not bothering anybody now. Lurch is very protective of Comber. And when we first got him, he was food aggressive as hell. Let's see here. Hey Lurch, back up. Back up. Can I have this? Here. Sit. 
Good to see it. All right, come here. Good boy. We fix that problem. About to go nest right here. Hey, Lurch, come here. It's okay, I promise. It's okay. It's okay. Good boy. It's okay. It's okay. 